Hi and welcome to another episode of Delaware County Political News, Meet the Candidate. I am your host, Larry DeMarco, and today we are here with Kristen Seal, candidate for the 168th PA Legislative District. Kristen was elected Rose Tree Media School Board Director in November 2017, winning a historic number of votes and was sworn in on December 5th, 2017. She is currently running for the 168th and has a primary opponent. Kristen, thank you for being a guest on Delaware County Political News. Thanks so much for having me, Larry. Kristen, you're running for the legislative district. Why give up on the school board so fast? <laughs> I'm not giving up on the school board. That's a little bit of a, a, a false frame. There's been a whisper campaign started around the district that I would be turning on my heel and abandoning my school board seat, and that's not actually true. Um, I made extra sure and checked it is both legal and ethical, uh, according to the Pennsylvania State Constitution, as well as the 1949 School Code and the State Ethics Commission. It is compatible to hold both the school board seat and the state legislative seat, so I'm able to do both. Well, you're going to be spreading yourself a little thin, though. Mm, maybe for someone else. For me, I'm a person who's always had time for the things I'm passionate about. I work full-time now, I'm a mother, I have a family, and I also serve on the school board, and I manage to balance all of those things. So right now I'm running for another full-time job, and I imagine that it would be no different than holding the job I hold currently where I'm leadership at an organization. Does sleep fit in anywhere? Yes, I am very careful. I wear a Fitbit specifically to track my sleep and make sure I get at least six to seven hours a night. Very good. <laughs> then you're a better person than I. <laughs> the 2017 historic election. Tell us what you learned through that campaign. Well, um, I feel like I learned quite a lot about the desires and the issues facing the voters in this district. I spent the better part of 2017 knocking doors in what is the heart of the 168th House District, which is the Rose Tree Media School District. I had a lot of really illuminating conversations with people at the doors who told me about ways that they were suffering, ways that they were and weren't being served by local government, things that they feared from their government after 2016. I feel like I had a lot of really good conversations where people um, felt welcome to tell me what it was that they were concerned about and what it was that they'd like me to do about it. And so um, I think a lot of what I took away um, in a disheartening political year at the beginning of that year, it was a really wonderful recognition of how fantastic the people of this district are, how great our neighbors are, and how much commonality we have between all of us. Um, and it just really continued to light my fire as far as my ability to be able to serve people and help them um, achieve their full potential and have their needs met. Kristen, there's not a lot of women in the PA State House, and I know you from before. You are a returning guest on my show. Can you tell us about the Emerge program that you've graduated from? Absolutely. And so this is the legacy of two wonderful representatives in our Pennsylvania State House, Tina Davis, Representative Tina Davis, and Representative Mary Jo Daly. It's because of them, their attempt to... Um, fortify and increase their numbers in that legislative body and across our state that the rest of us benefit. So I was a member of the graduating 2017 class of Emerge. It's a six month intensive candidate training program for democratic women that are running for office or that intend to run for office. And so you learn pretty much everything soup to nuts, not just about um, how to be a strong candidate, but you also become part of a network, a statewide as well as a national network of other women who are supporting each other's runs for office. I understand it's a great program and it's a pleasure to talk to all you graduates. Thank you. It's, we're so fortunate to have received this really robust training. I was also lucky enough to be one of um, 300 people selected out of a few thousand last year to attend the Progressive Change Campaign Committee training. That's the organization that um, recruited Elizabeth Warren to run for office in Congress. So 
I have uh, several friends of mine that graduated that program with me last year that you might recognize are um, Katie Muth, who's running for Senate this sure. year, and Melissa Schusterman, who's uh -huh. also running for the legislature this year in mm -hmm. the House. Um, I have a friend, Greg Edwards, who's running for Congress in Charlie Dent's district. So um, I built some really interesting networks of colleagues in the last year. I've been very fortunate. Great. You have an energy nonprofit. Can you share that with our viewers? Absolutely. I'm the director of operations at an organization that is responsible for the state's energy efficiency law, sort of the, the keystone uh, piece of legislation that compels utilities to do energy efficiency work across the state. So we're a trade organization of member businesses that are in the energy efficiency industry. That's everything from small mom and pop uh, businesses of two people that do home energy audits, all the way up to global multinational corporations that provide the technology for utilities running efficiency programs, as well as manufacturers. Um, so it's we represent a wide range of businesses across the state of Pennsylvania, and we do our best to help them connect with decision makers to grow the market for energy efficiency. It represents about 65,000 jobs in our state right now, so and we grow about 6 to 7 percent a year. Kristen, you have a long track record of supporting communities in public health, poverty, and energy. Can you talk about that for a little? Sure. We moved to Pennsylvania five years ago from New Mexico, and in New Mexico, I worked for two different organizations as a professional advocate. In one, I worked on women's health policy in the New Mexico State Legislature in Santa Fe, where we successfully passed bipartisan legislation that protected the health of women and that adjusted existing state laws that were gender discriminatory to make sure that women were achieving equity and parity under the law. After that, I worked for the New Mexico Center on Law and Poverty, which is an organization that protects the most vulnerable people in the state of New Mexico, which is one of the poorest states in the United States. Um, I worked mostly on the healthcare team, where uh, in this public interest law firm, I was responsible for communications for the entire state for the rollout of the Affordable Care Act. So in the, in the one year lead up, to the Affordable Care Act being realized, it was my job to make sure that in a state that was a majority minority state full of many different ethnicities, as well as over 200 tribal languages, that every vulnerable person in our state that needed health care got culturally appropriate, geographically appropriate, and language appropriate materials to get them enrolled in Medicaid. Um, at the end of it, we ended up enrolling 300,000 new people that didn't have health care into the Medicaid program once it was expanded in the state. Um, that's just part of what we worked on at the center. We worked on issues like equity and education funding in the Albuquerque School District, workers' rights for farm workers in the state. We worked on benefits programs, like making sure that we preserved student SNAP when the administration was trying to cut benefits to full-time students in need, and all sorts of other um, casework, as well as advocacy work in the legislature and the state administration and departments, as well as the governor's office, to make sure that the government was obeying the law or coming into compliance when they weren't, or that the law was being changed when it was necessary. For instance, to make sure that juveniles weren't put into solitary confinement in the jails and prisons in New Mexico. You have been involved with women's organizations and sports. Please talk about that. Sure. Well, in my 20s, I was a semi-pro boxer for a while. I used to train with a pro women's fighter. Um, you were a boxer, too. I, I love a contact sport. I used to fight also, but I had to quit because of my hands. Oh, that's awful. I'm so sorry that you had to quit. The ref kept stepping on me. Uh, <laughs> I left the sport due to a second that pregnancy. A <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please finish. Um, I love a contact sport, so uh, after boxing, I had another child, and after staying home with my youngest daughter for over a year, I was looking for something new to do in order to get fit and to spend time with other adult humans. So I ended up 
becoming accidentally a founder of Baltimore's first women's roller derby league. Um, not long after that, I got recruited up to the national governing body of the organization, which under my tenure grew to become an international governing body for the sport. So we started out as one of maybe 32 leagues in the United States. There are now over 400 leagues worldwide on every continent in just about every corner of the world that you can imagine. For a women's roller derby? Yeah. How come yeah. Philadelphia doesn't have one? We do. They're Philly Roller Derby. Oh, it's low profile. <laughs> Really is. It's one of the original leagues. Philly was actually the big sister league and helped us get our league started in Baltimore. Wow. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Kristen, is there one issue that you're most passionate about? Sure. There are many issues that I'm passionate about, especially in this district and this election cycle. Something that I think is really critical this year for us to take a look at is the fact that this legislative body has 18% women. Our district, the 168th, is a 52% women district and has never had a woman represent them to this legislative body. I think that representation matters. I think that we're at a critical point in history in Pennsylvania when we have got to become accountable for what happens when women aren't in the room and women aren't at the table. So for us specifically, it means a number of things. It means that SB3 passed both houses and made it to the governor's desk. Our legislature has a Republican supermajority, and we're fortunate that the governor vetoed it, but there are enough votes in the Senate that if they can rally, they can overturn that veto. And tell the viewers what SB3 is real quickly. Sure. So SB3 is the most restrictive abortion law in the United States at the state level on the books right now. Um, regardless of where you stand on the issue of choice, I think most of us can agree that women have agency over their own bodies and the right to make decisions decisions about their own bodies. And so for me, I don't see that throwing one more middle-aged white man until we get a critical mass of middle-aged white men is going to change anything that's been legislated. They've had decades to protect our rights and to do what's right for us and our children and our mothers. And it's not working. It's not working for us. We're at a real critical point here where I think that there's no turning back. And so for me personally, for my daughters, for my family and my community, the people that I love and care about, none of this is academic or abstract. It's absolutely time for us to show up and start legislating for ourselves when people demonstrate decade after decade that they can't protect our rights. So why do you want to be a state rep? I think that I bring um, a lot of experience, qualification, and a unique skill set to the table. It's not just the fact that I have experience working in two legislatures, building coalitions of people in the community, bringing community-based research and community-informed policy to legislators on both sides of the aisle and figuring out ways to bring people together to work around a common goal. I've done that successfully in both New Mexico and Pennsylvania. Um, Outside of those qualifications, the experience of being a delegate to the DNC in 2016, as well as serving on the school board, has shown me that I have a unique ability to earn the respect of my colleagues, regardless of our background, and bring people together around a common goal of service. So we've done a couple of historic things since taking our seats on this school board in December, including early negotiating the teacher contract for the first time in the history of the district, agreeing on another contract for the bus mechanics and bus drivers, and making sure that the Act 1 index didn't, we didn't take the Act 1 index exception this year, which is the mechanism by which the district is allowed to raise your taxes without a referendum. So we stopped any tax raises that wouldn't be approved by taxpayers this year. And that's just within our first few weeks sitting together on this board. And I genuinely think it's because my colleagues and I that were new to the board came into this in a spirit of working together with a clean slate and found common 
ground immediately with the Republican majority that we're working with. And I think that if you can sit with people and respect them and listen to them and find where you've got common ground, it doesn't have to be partisan. We can all work together. And I think it's been a wonderful opportunity for everyone to realize that neither side of this is a monolith and we don't all agree or disagree on any one thing. So I feel like I bring a wealth of experience and skill around meeting people where they are, finding our common goals, and finding ways to do the important thing, which is to serve the people of the district or to serve the people of the Commonwealth. Kristen, we'll leave it there. And I wanna thank you again for being a guest on Delaware County Political News. Thanks so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. We have been here with Kristen Seal, and I am your host, Larry DiMarco. If you like this video, please share it with people on your contact list and Facebook friends. We are signing off. Tune in next time. Bye for now.